Hello and welcome back to Black Bear Forge. What do you say we get back to work on our Viking style hammer? Now unfortunately this hammer has a few issues and I think we're going to start by seeing if we can fix those, but I don't really have high hopes. Now for one thing this hammer ended up just a little longer than I wanted it to be. This is at about seven inches, I wanted about six and a half, so it's not bad, but it's just a little long. That's 175 millimeters long, but I can live with that and I can also trim the ends a little bit. I've got a, about a half inch of tool steel in both places, so I could take a little off without losing too much. But the big issue really is this delamination in the wrought iron right here. It only exists on this side and it doesn't go all the way through. If you remember the last video, we made an attempt at re-welding this and it wasn't completely accessible, but it is kind of stuck back together. The other issue is that there are slight splits here, and these aren't a big deal, but they're less than ideal. So what am I going to do about it? Of course, like anything else, you have options on what you do about it. You can throw it out, start all over again. In fact, you could cut the faces off, maybe save the tool steel, cut the eye out of this, re-weld it back into another billet, start all over with a fresh billet, salvaging this material. Certainly an option, but a fair amount of work. You could simply start all over with fresh material. Again, not a bad option, and in the long run might be the most efficient option. But I hate getting this far with something and throwing it away if I don't need to, and there's still things to be learned from this project. So what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try one more time to weld this down. I Really not real sure about that. There's not a lot here to work with. This is thin material stood up on edge when you get around an eye like this. And trying to weld it is going to really deform that eye. And then I have to do the same thing to the other eye or the hammer starts to curve. As it draws out, we're going to start bowing the hammer head. So we got to draw out the other side of the eye. The eye is going to get a little thinner, a little funnier looking, and it's going to start to get longer and skinnier, which isn't really what I want with this eye. I like the shape of the eye the way it is. I would rather not make it any bigger if I don't need to. So I'm not going to do much there because I don't want to deform it. I may also take a welding heat and try and deal with these little splits at the end. Again, they don't bother me so much. That's just like doing a wrapped eye axe that doesn't completely weld up at the eye, and that's really common. The other reason I'm not too worried about it is that even if it fails in use, wrought iron doesn't fail the way steel does. Those seams are just going to open up a little here, a little there, and the head's going to get loose, and it's going to be obviously falling apart, but it won't just break like hard tool steel does. A modern hammer that's all one solid piece of steel is more likely to fail in a rather dramatic manner. Some people call it an explosion. It's not. It's just a big crack. But cracking of steel hammer and having pieces fly off of it in use after a big impact can really be dangerous in the shop. Wrought iron doesn't fail quite the same way, so I'm not as worried about it. Plus, I doubt this is going to be an everyday user for me. It's an exercise in making Viking era tools, and even if it never strikes iron, it's still a learning process. So I'm going to light the coal forge again, bring this up to a welding heat, and we're going to try and fix those two issues. Whatever we end up with, that's where I'm going to go with it. But then I'll need to let it normalize again before we go to the hardening and tempering stage. Since I'm going to try and correct some of those problems, I'm pretty sure there's not going to be time today to completely finish it and try it out, but we're going to get it as close as we can. Put just a little bit of flux in there. And from the inside, just in case it goes through. It actually doesn't look like it connects all the way through anymore. But you can see some difference. Let me turn that blower off. You can see here where this part of the ear is cooler. And that means it isn't really connected because there's an obvious line where the heat changes. So that's a good sign that you've not fully welded there. Now I'm going to work with a ball peen hammer because that will get right down into that ear without messing up the ear any more than I have to. 
And at some point I'm going to come over to this stake to work from the side. Some light quick blows right in there next to the eye, which of course deforms it. I wish I had a hand, hammer with a longer handle here. And I'm just treating the other side the same. It doesn't actually need to be welded. So I'm not worried that it isn't at welding heat. As you can see how badly that collapses that eye in on itself. It starts to really make a mess of it. And as far as I can tell, we haven't solved the problem. But we have made it pooch out a little bit, which means when we go over the little stake here in the next heat, that might help us get that to go together. Using a very light cross pin just to try and blend that. Also burn this a little bit. There's a real risk with trying to bring thin material up to welding heat. That if we're going to save it, it's saved. If we're not going to save it, it's just not going to happen. Because that's the last I'm going to do with that. And now I'm just trying to seal up those two little cracks. Again, very light blows, just trying to get things to move together. This also brings the edges down, and that I really didn't want to do. Or I should say it brings the sides in, so the thing is getting kind of an hourglass shape. So to try and bring those back, I'm going to just upset this a little bit. Let's see if I can get the cheeks to poof out some. Might make it easier to drive the drift. Okay, say so the thing is really nasty and deformed now. But if we get a drift in it, there's a good chance we've saved it. But there's also a good chance we've just made it ugly. So I'm going to start with this longer drift that I can get in from the bottom, I think. So well, that doesn't fit through. So let's try this one. That'll go all the way through and that'll be better than pushing on that. I'll be spreading it. I'm going to put this in from the back where it isn't as deformed. Luckily it's long enough to use as a handle, which is why I tend to like long drifts. Let's see if we can straighten this out. I want to drive it too tight because it's cooling off. It's just minor refinements at this point in preparation for the next drift. Or I should say the next drifting because I'm now I'm going to come through with this from the top. There they go. I actually drifted from this side twice so I can bring it back up to heat one more time. Draw those ears out a little bit more. Managed to burn one of them there. Just a little bit of a twist out here. It's still pretty misshapen. It's a lot tighter at the top, which is the opposite of what I wish it was. Now really, I'm not very happy with this at this point. That eye is really misshapen. I believe I should have gone with my first instinct and just left well enough alone. Well, we got it up to a nice heat, but I burned one of the ears off. And we've really cracked the side. 
So we've gone from I think it'll be okay to this is now garbage. So we've not only burned the ear off on this side, which is actually the good side, we burned the ear on this side. It now has the same crack through here. It has a vertical crack here. This crack never went away. It's really thin wasted through here. While I was fairly proud with the general appearance of this hammer initially, now I wouldn't do anything with it. In fact, I'm not even gonna try and salvage the wrought iron out of it. So while this hammer is very disappointing, and like I say, I'm not taking any further, it's not worth wasting any more time on, I also am starting to get the feeling I've been showing way too many failures or videos where things didn't go right. It's not really like that in the shop all the time. It's just that I'm trying different things for the sake of the video. So sometimes I'm out of my comfort zone and working wrought iron is way out of my comfort zone. I probably haven't worked 10 pounds of wrought iron in the 35 years I've been blacksmithing. But this master mirror project, the tools would have all been made from wrought iron and I really want to try and make most of them in wrought iron because that's how we learn things. So things aren't always gonna go right. But that also means I will probably make a lot of those tools off camera so I can concentrate on learning the techniques without worrying about the distractions of lights, video, microphone, is this camera running, is that camera running, that camera's in the way for this shot. Meanwhile, stuff's burning up in the fire. And that's not an excuse. I should know better than to be distracted but it's hard not to be when you're working on a video project. Now, after doing all that, my eye is about three eighths of an inch longer than I really wanted it in the first place. And the overall hammer is still about the same. So the little bit of upsetting I did, did keep the material in, but it didn't do a thing for the eye. The eye still got really thin, really misshapen, plus burned and still cracked. Several people in the comments section said that they have found they do better with a very thin punch or even a chisel to create the initial slit and then they drift it to shape and draw it out around the drift. We may try that with the next one instead of going for a punch that's close to the finish size of the eye. Wrought iron is a different material than mild steel. It's not the same. You need to learn new techniques. And hopefully if you're looking at working with wrought iron, you can learn from some of my mistakes on this project. But there will be more wrought iron hammers in the future. In the meantime, I suggest you check out Doc's Hot Shop. He has been working on some of the tools out of the Master Mirror collection, and his hammers are looking way better than mine. Doesn't have a very big channel, doesn't have a lot of subscribers. I am sure he would love it if you guys stopped by and visited. Now, besides learning some things about wrought iron and what not to do with wrought iron, one of the lessons learned today is sometimes you just gotta leave well enough alone. Had I left it where it was at the beginning of the video, I was okay with that hammer. I probably was never gonna use it. It's one I was just gonna finish as a learning experience. And I did learn a lot of stuff today, but I ended up with a piece of scrap instead of a, a hammer that at least looked like it was supposed to look. Anyways, I've rambled on long enough. I hope you learned something from this video like I did. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't done so already, I would love it if you hit that subscribe button. Feel free to stick around, watch a few of the other videos, share the videos with your friends, but then by all means, make time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next one.